Welcome to the fourth video lecture on action research. In previous videos, we discussed the introduction to action research, context and the rationale, and the action research questions, and the proposed innovation, intervention, and strategies. We emphasized the use of appropriate intervention to address a learning problem in the classroom. In this fourth video, we'll talk about the other parts of the action research proposal, the action research methods, work plan and timelines, cost estimates, plans for utilization, and dissemination. Before we start, let's play a game. In connection to our new topic for today, I have here procedures in cooking tinolang manok. What you have to do is to arrange them, the procedures in order. I'll give you 15 seconds to arrange the procedures in order. Are you ready? Here are the procedures. You are correct. The following are the correct procedures in cooking tinolang manok. One of the components of the action research method is the participant. The 40 grade 6 pupils of Sir Jonard from the town of Difun in the province of Prino had a problem in the subject verb agreement in an English class. It was identified to be the least mastered competency in the national achievement tests. So he used the technique technology enhanced interactive quiz as an intervention to address the problem. He chose this class because most of them had a, had a difficulty in understanding the topic which is the subject verb activity. Let us also listen to the following teachers who will talk about the students, the participants of their action research. What's the characteristic of these students that prompted the teacher to conduct an action research to this class? Sir Marlu from Cavite, we have Sir Ferdinand Razon from Makati City, and we have Mr. Richelle Apolinario from Pasig City. Let's watch this. In the school where I have been teaching, students often go to uh, guidance office to report uh, unresolved conflicts with their classmates. Uh, likewise, there are 36 cases recorded of bullying in our school and based from the guidance office, the most dominant forms of bullying that was being happening is physical bullying. As part of our intervention, teachers underwent a training on how to handle bullying cases by having a robust implementation on child protection policy and RA 10 6-7 through the conduct of classroom discipline techniques. It was found out that discipline techniques is an effective strategy to lower the cases of bullying. I observed that my pupils were very active during the class discussion and class activities. However, when it comes to summative tests and periodical tests, some of my pupils got failing grades or low scores. I am curious, what is the problem? How can I help my pupils enhance their academic performance? What is the best instructional materials, strategy, or intervention that help my pupils enhance their academic performance and attitude towards learning science? With that, I come up with how strategic intervention materials seem as instructional platform enhance the academic performance and attitudes of my pupils. Our respondents were remedial students from grade 7 sections 37, 38, and 39, which were selected using or positive sampling. Knowing that our study focused on remediation, thus this remedial student on last bracket sections are the ones best suited on our study. Research methods are the strategies, processes, or techniques used in the collection of data in order to find whether the intervention or the strategy improves student learning. Let us listen to these two teachers and one division coordinator in science and a school principal who will talk about the data gathering method of their own action research. We have Sir John from Pangasinan, Sir Joshua from Pasig City, and Sir Edwin Salviejo from Makati City. I thought of integrating mathematical games entitled Matlaro Matuto Tayo with 8 different games in the classroom for effective learning. I am teaching grade 4 section 2 mathematics and I observe that the addition and subtraction skills are low as manifested in the results of the summative assessment and quarterly test. 
The study utilized the one-group pre-test, post-test design. It is used the single-group test design that utilizes pre-test and post-test instruments to determine the levels of the addition and subtraction skills of the pupils before and after the use of the intervention game-based learning. My study was entitled Utilizing Graphing Calculators and Enhancing Learning of Equation of Circles of Grade 10 ST Students. My data source was the students' grades in the first quarter. Now for RQ1 and 2, I need to find out if there are significant differences between the learning gains and post-test performances of the controlled and experimental group. The two groups were asked to answer the same pre-test and post-test for data sources. I have used the same test for both groups so that the difficulty of the test will not affect in any way the differences between the learning gains and post-test performances of the two groups. Lastly, to find out how do calculators enhance the learnings of the two groups, I have conducted interviews. Now, the data gathered here will be a backbone for the findings for the data in RQ1 and RQ2. Out of my six uh, classroom action researches, there is a common uh, source of data, which is the test result. So, you have to construct test questions and administer that as a pre-test and post-test. Because through that, uh, comparing the result after uh, conducting the or implementing rather the intervention, you will be concluding whether that intervention is successful as far as improving the learner's achievement. Uh, authentic assessment. What we mean by authentic assessment? Uh, this assessment will uh, is now what we call the performance task wherein uh, learners were uh, are required rather to create a product based on the learnings or knowledge that they gained from the intervention. The third one is the interview questionnaire wherein selected students will undergo uh, this process. They will be interviewed in order to find out uh, or verify rather the veracity of their product. After identifying the action research method, now have the data analysis plan. After determining the test results or the assessment scores, now how do we ana analyze the data? Mr. Emerson Fababaer, the, the Managing Director of Student Best Integrated Montessori School and Child Champion Consulting, will share how to analyze data. There is a misconception that in data analysis, you have to use sophisticated statistical tools to make your study more credible or accurate, but that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, there are data that can be analyzed without using statistics in the case of qualitative research where the bulk of data is mostly in the form of uh, images, words, objects, feelings, opinions, etc. Some data can also be analyzed using simple statistics like uh, mean, median, mode, or percentages. The type of analytical tools that we use in data analysis depends on the research objectives. For example, we want to compare the difference between the academic performance of a uh, class A and class B or the academic performance of the students uh, before and after an intervention. Uh, that can be analyzed using T-Test or ANOVA. We have to remember that the goal of action research is not to impress but to inform our decisions, our actions, with regards to our teaching and learning practices. For the work plan of the action research proposal, it must be stated in the future tense of the verb. It starts from the pre-intervention stage, usually from the development of lesson plan and materials, to the implementation of the intervention, to the analysis of data. Let us listen to these teachers who will talk about the work plan or the action plan of their action research. How will they implement the intervention and gather the data needed in their action research? So I have come up to this reading relay. It's like an amazing page of which I prepared some tasks to be done and questions to be answered in each station while they are reading that uh, particular article and I've scheduled doing it every fourth uh, Friday of the month. 
And after several months, it seems to be engaging to them. And they're looking forward for the next fourth Friday of the month. So I think it's effective and enhance their, their proficiency in Filipino. I conceptualized a reading intervention code that picks the teach strategy. Integrating visuals, pictures taken from the oral text or content before introducing the plain text of the story. I made use of the story elements or story grammars being presented to the pupils before reading the plain text with pictures and bolder letters of the sentences. The Pix to Teach strategy aimed to lessen the number of slow readers and those pupils with poor comprehensions. With those reading intervention materials, the pupils found it very engaging and interesting, catching their attention in doing visual arts or picture stories even beyond after reading. Now I'll show you a sample action research proposal, particularly the action plan of my action research. From the pre-intervention, we have the following activities. For the intervention part, we have these activities. And for the post-intervention stage, we have these activities. For this part, for this cost estimate, the projected cost or expenditures of supplies or materials, communication expenses, transportation expenses, food and other expenses before and during the conduct of the study and reproduction, printing, as well as binding costs and expenses related to research dissemination after data gathering phases of the study will be summarized in the table. The research fund will be used for the following expenses related to implementation of research proposals and expenses related to research dissemination. Now let's have the plans for dissemination and utilization. There are different ways in how we can uh, disseminate or share our action research, the results of, the, of our action research. We can disseminate our research in schools through learning action cell or the LAC sessions or the professional learning community or PLC, in service training, school governing councils, school improvement plans, annual implementation plan or through school report cards. I hope that this video lecture helps you understand the value of action research in our profession. When we do action research, we're like hitting a bird with the right stone. We are finding solutions or we're finding the proper solutions to every problem that we have in our classroom. It is a fact that our pupils have their own unique weaknesses. And through action research, we are able to find proper and unique solutions to these weaknesses. As the manager of the classroom, it is the teacher's responsibility to make sure that everything in the classroom is well and in order. From school facilities, student behaviors, as well as the effective delivery of the teaching and learning process. In order to do so, the teachers must be creative and intentional enough to address issues or concerns that affect these processes. That's where action research comes in. Not only it aims to find solutions to students' learning concerns, but also develop the teacher's craft and contribute to the development or to the improvement of the entire academic community. Hello everyone. Thank you, Sir Jason, for this awesome opportunity to be part of your video lectures on action research. Actually, we find these video lectures easy to understand for beginning researchers. And we hope that our teachers watching these videos learn, relearn, and unlearn the rudiments of action research. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Thank you very much and God bless. Every day, we teachers pass by the road of Jericho where struggling students wait for good Samaritans to hear their silent cry begging for attention. So as teachers, we always hear the problems of our students. We know the learning problems, the situations inside the classroom. So we are here to help our students. May you be inspired to do action research because it will make a difference in the lives of your students.